Hi, my name is Peter, and today I'm gonna walk you through my way of making a first-person controller for your mobile game using Unity. All the code that I'm gonna show is available for download from the link in the description, and let's get right into it. If you're like me, the thing you hate the most about first and third-person mobile games is the UI that is always in the way and take up a huge portion of the screen. For the purpose of this tutorial, we're gonna use the left-hand side of the screen for moving the player, and the right-hand side of the screen for moving or rotating the camera. You are obviously free to add the joystick later, but my suggestion is to keep the UI minimal since the screen of the phone is small. I have already created a new project and set up a simple scene with some low poly assets that I made. The first thing you need to do is to go to the project's build settings and switch the target platform to either iOS or Android. Choose the one that is supported by your testing device and hit the button. It's gonna take a few seconds and you'll be good to go. Now, let's create a capsule and position it in the center of the scene, so that we are able to see it. I'm gonna rename it Player and give it a bright red material, for aesthetic purposes. Now, I'm gonna drag the camera and parent it to the capsule, as we are gonna need it to move and rotate along with a player object. You wanna place it where you imagine the eyes of your player are gonna be. So I'm gonna put it on the front side, towards the upper end of the capsule. At this point, it's time to create a new c -sharp script. I'll call it First Person Controller and drag it onto the player to attach it as a new component. One thing we're also gonna need is to add a Character Controller component to the player object since it's what we are going to use to move it. Perfect! Let's open the script and start coding. Before we start scripting, how is it going to work? Unity's input class has a Touches array that stores the information about all the touches currently detected by the touch screen. We can easily read a touch passing its index in the array to the getTouch method. The problem with this approach is that when we are using multiple fingers, at the same time we are not guaranteed to have, for example, the one on the left always be at index 0 and the one on the right always be at index 1. Also, we don't want these touches to interfere with one another. We are gonna designate the left finger for the movement and the right finger for the camera. Unity automatically gives every new touch a finger ID which will stay the same even if its index was to change. Basically, this is our way of tracking a continuous touch from the moment the finger is put on the screen to the moment we take it off. We are going to start with the input detection and tracking on each side of the screen. So, I declared two integers that are going to store the finger IDs for the touches we are going to track. I initialize them at negative 1 which will be my way of telling the program that those fingers are not being tracked yet. I also declare the float that's gonna store the half of the screen width and will let me decide whether a touch is happening on the left side or on the right side of the screen. I'm calculating it in the start method because there is no use doing so every frame. In the update method, I wrote a for loop that is gonna iterate through all the touches in the input class. And for each one of them, it will analyze its phase with a switch statement. In case the touch has just began, I'm gonna evaluate the touch's position and decide whether it's left or right. If its X coordinate is left than half of the screen and no left finger is being tracked at the moment, then that touch will start being tracked as the left finger touch. The same will happen if it's on the right. So if its X position is greater than half screen width and no right finger is being tracked, then that touch will be tracked as the right one. At the end, if the touch has been ended or cancelled, and its finger ID was the one being tracked, I will stop tracking it, both for the left finger and the right finger. Let's jump back to the editor and test this temporary code. So the first thing you want to make sure of is that your device is actually being connected to Unity. So you go to edit, project setting and in the editor tab, check that under device, your phone or your testing device is selected. Then you hit the play button and launch Unity Remote on your phone. Okay, so now the game is running on my phone and you will notice that it will recognize when a finger went down on the right side or on the left side and it's tracking them until I lift my fingers from the screen and they are not interfering with one another. Now let's go on with camera movement and rotation. 
since we're gonna be rotating the camera. I added a public reference to its transform. I also added a public float to control its sensitivity to our finger's movements. I then declared two private fields, a vector2 to store the input, and the float to store the current pitch, or vertical rotation, of our camera. In the update method, I have replaced the for loop with a getTouchInput function that I just created, just to have it look a bit more clean. In the switch statement that we are using to evaluate each touch's phase, I added two new cases, the moved case and the stationary case. If a touch a finger has been moved and it's the same finger we are tracking on the right side of the screen, then we're going to update the value in look input to the delta position of the touch, which is just how much the touch the finger has moved since last frame, multiplied by camera sensitivity and time.delta time to have it be consistent frame by frame. Also, if the finger has remained still stationary since last frame, we're just gonna set look input to vector2.0 to avoid having the camera spin around when we're not moving our finger. Then I added the look around function, which is gonna be used to rotate the camera. First, we're gonna handle the vertical rotation. We are calculating the camera's pitch by clamping its value, to which we are subtra subtracting the y value of the look input, between negative 90 and 90 degrees. Then we are applying this pitch to the local rotation of the camera transform. Writing this quaternion.euler camera pitch 00, we are basically telling Unity to rotate the camera on the x-axis, the local x-axis of the camera transform. For the horizontal rotation, we are rotating the transform of the player object, our capsule, to have the camera look orbit around the player. We're just rotating the transform around its up direction, which is the green axis in the editor, by an angle of lookinput.x, which is the horizontal value stored in our input. For as a last thing, I added this short if statement in the update method. If a finger is being tracked on the right side of the screen, then try to look around. So try to rotate the camera. Back in the editor, we are setting the main camera transform as the camera transform of the mono behavior, and we're giving a value to the camera sensitivity. I found that using 10 works pretty well, so I'm gonna keep it like that. Now, let's hit the play button to see if it works. You will notice that everything works as we were expecting it to be. When I put a finger down on the right side of the screen, the camera is now rotating according to my movement. When I put the finger down on the left side of the screen, nothing is happening, which is what we wanted. Now, onto to the last part of the tutorial, the player movement. Again, since we're using a character controller component to move the player, I added a public reference to it up here, just below the camera transform. I also added the public float to adjust its moving speed and another float to calculate the dead zone for the movement input. I want to avoid the player running around out of our control after any unintentional subtle movement of the finger. I also added two private vector2 fields, one for storing the starting position of our finger on the screen and one for storing the value of the movement input. In the start method, I calculate the dead zone by dividing the screen height by the value that we're gonna choose in the inspector, and then elevating everything to the power of 2, for reasons that I'm gonna explain in a moment. In the switch statement, when a finger has just been detected on the left of the screen, I'm gonna store its position for later use. When a finger has been moved, I'm gonna calculate the move input vector by subtracting its starting position from the current position. Lastly, I wrote a small move function to apply the movement to the player controller. If the square magnitude of the move input is lesser than the input dead zone, I'm gonna 
return the function and not apply any movement. The reason why I elevated this to the power of 2 and that I'm using the square magnitude instead of the actual magnitude is just for efficiency purposes. Since we're gonna target lower end devices, we wanna avoid calculating the magnitude that uses the square root function. That is actually way more costly for the processor. If the square magnitude of the move input is greater than the input decimal, I'm gonna calculate the movement direction instead by normalizing the movement input and multiplying it by the speed and time dot delta time for the same reason we did for the camera. Finally, I am applying the movement to the character controller by multiplying its right direction, the red axis, and its forward direction, the blue axis, by the two values of the movement direction. As you have probably already seen, I also added an if statement to the update method to only use the move function when a left finger is being tracked. Now let's jump back to the editor and see if our code finally works. In the editor, let's just assign the character controller and some values to the move speed like 8 and the dead zone like 10 again and hit the play button to test our code. As you can see, I'm still able to look around freely, but now when I put a finger down on the left side of the screen, I'm also able to control the movement of our player. You will notice the effect of the dead zone that will prevent the player from running around when the movement is very subtle, but as soon as I get further out, I can explore our scene freely. Now, if you want to, you can have a little joystick pop out just below the finger and move around with a player. Or you can choose not to have any extra UI and keep the screen clean. You will also want to add a button to jump if your game wants you to jump, and some gravity effects that it's just gonna move the player downwards when it's airborne. That was it. Thank you for watching. Again, you can download the code I used from the link in the description. And in hope of seeing you again, bye for now.